The evolutionary arms race between predator and prey has led to the development of some pretty amazing or terrifying features among many animals to help them chase down their prey or escape their predators. But one group of animals went down a very puzzling evolutionary pathway, snakes. Snakes evolved from lizards and in the process of evolving to outclass their prey or their competitors, evolved to lose their limbs and with this, their ability to chase their prey down on legs. But not just this, they also lost their claws, so it was much harder to kill their prey as well. And because of this, snakes ended up having to develop new hunting strategies, like killing by constricting or injecting venom. It is very difficult to think of the advantage of losing limbs, and it seems that snakes have had to work hard to develop new survival strategies to get around this. So why did a group of entirely carnivorous animals evolve to lose their legs? Due to many features throughout their body, it is known that snakes definitely evolved from a group of lizards that over time adapted to lose their legs. The most primitive of modern snakes, like pythons and boas, even still have tiny hind leg bones buried in muscles towards their tail ends. DNA evidence shows that they are most closely related to monitor lizards and iguanas, and it is thought that snakes and some of the venomous lizards may have all descended from the same venomous ancestor as well and they are grouped together under the name Toxicophera that contains all snakes and some of their close lizard relatives. Toxicophera contains non-venomous lizards as well, and of course some snakes aren't venomous either. But actually, nearly all venomous snakes produce venom to at least a certain extent, and some of the non-venomous reptiles that are closely related to snakes, like iguanas, produce a very weak venom, but have venom genes and venom glands, but have wasted away as if the venom was once much stronger. So they may have inherited their venom from a single venomous ancestor many millions of years ago, but then some species lost their venom and some evolved much deadlier venom. The giant marine reptiles, the mosasaurs, descended from a lizard that was closely related to monitor lizards and snakes, which means they would have also belonged to the Toxicophera group and descended from a venomous ancestor. However, to this day, no evidence of a venom delivery system has been found on their fossils. The genes that create venom in snakes originated from genes that create proteins that perform a completely different role in the body. This is known because all venom genes are closely related to other genes in venomous and non-venomous animals. The genes are changed through a process known as a gene duplication, which is a type of mutation where animals can be born randomly with two sets of the same gene. Because they then have a second copy of the gene, natural selection is then free to alter one gene without altering the function of the original gene it was duplicated from. Gene duplications are rare, but they are very important to evolution because they are one of the ways in which living organisms gain new genetic material. Under the right pressures from their environment, the venomous animals co-opted these genes and used them for the production of deadly toxins. The venom of snakes and venomous lizards like monitor lizards, or the Gila monster, is closely related to digestive enzymes, and their venom glands are modified salivary glands. Many millions of years ago, a mutation would have occurred that made some of the enzymes in their saliva have a slightly harmful effect, and so when the lizard bit its prey, even the tiniest effect could help the lizard hunt slightly more prey or tackle slightly larger prey, increasing its chances of surviving, encouraging natural selection to get to work. Over time, the enzyme became more and more toxic, the more of an advantage the creature got. However, the incredible fangs that can actually inject the venom are unique to snakes. Venomous lizards, like the Gila monster, have a much less complex way of getting venom into their victims. They just have special grooves in their teeth that encourage their saliva into the wounds of their prey. It is likely that the hollow tube-like teeth of snakes evolved from teeth like this. The problem is that the earliest snake fangs in the fossil record are already venom injectors. But there is a Triassic-era reptile that lived 200 million years ago called Uachitodon, that although not closely related to snakes, seems to show the transition that snakes went through to gain their infamous fangs. Uachitodon are only known from the teeth, but the fossils of their teeth show a transition where the oldest fossils have a venom canal that is a shallow groove. The later dated teeth have a longer and deeper groove, and then later the groove had become all but sealed in with just a hair-like seam to mark it to finally developing fully closed tubes. So the teeth show an animal evolving chewing venom into their prey like a Gila monster to a later one that injected venom with hollow teeth like a snake, 
and it shows a transition of how snake-like teeth can evolve from more primitive healer monster-like teeth. What's interesting is that venomous snakes don't all descend from one fanged ancestor, and venomous fangs have actually evolved among snakes on multiple occasions. So venom evolution in snakes does seem to have been spurred on, at least in part, to make up for no longer being able to leap, sprint or grab. So why did snakes evolve their long bodies? Unfortunately, snake evolution is quite poorly understood, as the fossil record is not very good. Snake bones are usually small and delicate, but also snakes have actually been quite obscure animals up until relatively recently. Snakes lived alongside the dinosaurs, but at this time it seems they were much rarer and only became common across a lot of the world fairly recently, making fossilization of early transitional snakes rare and the limited material and small amount of ancient snake species known tell us contradictory things about their evolution. Although animals evolving to lose their legs may seem counterproductive to their survival, snakes are not unique in evolving this way, and it has actually happened on many different occasions, among different groups of animals. However, almost every time this has happened, the animal is aquatic. For instance, the Sicilians, which are a group of amphibians, have adapted like snakes, losing their limbs and historically, amphibians have done this before with the Istopoda that were once thought to be snakes due to how similar their fossils were. But also, many ancient amphibians evolved to have long thin bodies and very small limbs. This trend is easier to make sense of with aquatic animals because smaller limbs can reduce drag in the water, and an elongated body would help the animal swim like an eel. And for a time, it was thought that this is how snakes evolved, from an aquatic lizard that lost its limbs and elongated its body to become better at swimming, and then migrated back onto land. It was known that snakes had adapted from lizards and they had once had legs since Darwin's time, but the first transitional fossil of a snake wasn't discovered until 1997. It was called Pachyrhachus, that looked very much like a snake, but had small hind limbs, and its fossils were found in a 90 million year old marine ecosystem, seeming to support the theory that snakes evolved from aquatic lizards. Snakes are also known to be quite closely related to the giant marine reptiles the mosasaurs, meaning that both snakes and mosasaurs could have evolved from the same group of aquatic lizards, that then adapted in different ways later. However, since the discovery of Pachyrhachus, there have been new discoveries of snakes that cast doubt over an aquatic origin of snakes, specifically from an ancient snake known as Najash, that lived on land. It actually lived in a similar time to Pachyrhachus, around 90 million years ago in the late Cretaceous period. However, it was a lot more primitive. Najash had more robust hind limbs, and still had a sacrum, which is the part of the backbone that attaches to the legs, meaning that its limbs may still have been slightly functional, making Najash one of the most primitive snakes known in the fossil record, and it lived on land, not in the ocean. Another ancient snake that lived around the same time, called Dinalicia patagonica, was studied using CT scans, and its bones and ear canal look like those that exist on modern burrowing snakes. They had a large vestibule that is associated with a low frequency hearing, which is important for burrowing animals because lower frequencies travel through hard objects more easily, and other ancient snakes have similar features, suggesting that snakes may have evolved to shrink down and eventually lose their limbs to become better at burrowing. So snakes are in what is known as a genetic bottleneck, they were lizards that evolved an incredibly specialised body plan for a very specific job, to become effective burrowers. But then, later, many of their descendants that inherited the same body plan adapted to live in different ways that required different survival strategies, to still be effective hunters, like evolving to constrict, or even turning their teeth into syringes. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.